Well, the time has come to do a setup on this thing. Get it done, right? <laughs> seen enough videos of me doing a little bit here and there to it so let's get it finished and get it playing again first thing you want to do well obviously put strings on it that's already been done tune it up to pitch stretch out your strings pretty simple to do just kind of grab the strings a little bit and kind of stretch them out a little bit as you're going up the string I've already done that with this next thing you want to do is tune it back to pitch after that couple of things you could do first. You can adjust your action height first, but that can change and will change if you adjust the truss rod. So let's get this thing tuned up first. All right, so in playing position, holding your guitar, guitar pick in hand, let's get it tuned up. So what I'm looking at over here is gearbox on my desk, my laptop, and I got the tuner set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and check things out a little bit. So E, A, D, G, B, and high E. We have to do some work with the nut because the strings are sticking in the nut. So now we're in tune. Now you can do two things right now. You can check your action height or set your truss rod. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and check the action height on this thing. Kind of eyeball it a little bit as I put this uh, bridge and everything back on. Check it out, see how it is. Now you can use a standard ruler in inches. This is 16 32s, uh, 8s, and 64s. Or you can get yourself one of these little cards. These are a lot easier to read because when you're looking at 64s on the ruler, it's a little hard to see. So I like to keep mine set around a 16th on the high E and uh, 5 64s on the low. So let's go check that out at the 12th fret. I'm a hair under 1 16th. And I am. Eh, under 564s. So let's see exactly where I'm at on the 64th scale. I'm at 464s on this thing. So let's kind of hear what it sounds like with Jersey Buzz. Not too bad. Now, checking out the truss rod. All right, so let's adjust the truss rod. How do you do this? Well, you're gonna need some tools either a four millimeter Allen key or the wrench that comes with the guitar that you have. Like Gibson has a wrench instead of a Allen key. This guitar here has a wrench, which I don't have, didn't come with one. So I have a socket that I can use that works out perfect for this thing. Um, no problems with that. I've already adjusted the truss rod on this thing. And I don't think I'm gonna have to adjust it again. Normally, when I'm using 10s on a lot of my guitars, if I adjust the truss rod to 12 thousandths, if I remove the strings, usually it goes ruler flat. And when I put the strings back on, get everything up to pitch again, stretch out the strings, tune it up again, the neck goes right back to 12 thousandths. So I've been kind of lucky with this. So you're gonna need a capo. You're gonna put that on the first fret. You're gonna need a 12 thousandths feeler gauge. Some guitars will say 8 thousandths to 20 thousandths of relief. I think 20 thousandths is way too much relief in a guitar neck. Uh, I kind of like to stick around the 12 thousandths. So at the 17th fret or where the body meets the neck, you're going to fret down on it and you're going to put your feeler gauge and kind of feel in around the 9th and 8th fret. Just slide it right underneath the string. Now you would be doing this in playing position, not laying on the table. So it'll look like this. Now 
Now you want the feeler gauge to slide underneath the string, not pushing the string up. And like I said, it's still set where it was before. So I don't really have to do anything with the neck of this guitar, but just put the truss rod cover that I made back on it and be done with it. So that's how you adjust a truss rod. Not a big deal. Now remember, when you adjust a truss rod, if you have to add relief to it, turn a little bit at a time. Don't turn it a lot. You could risk breaking the nut, or the truss rod I mean, and you could crack the neck. So be careful with that. Also, when you're adjusting your neck, you're going to change the action height of your guitar. So if you're going to add more relief, you're also going to have more action at the 12th fret. So be aware of that. You're going to have to lower your bridge down a little bit more after you do your adjustments, just in case. So kind of a little bit of a rule of thought right there. All right, so what I want to do now is put the truss rod cover that I made on the guitar. So luckily I save a lot of the screws that uh, from all the other jobs or whatever I've been working on and make this pretty easy to put it back in place. All the holes are pre-drilled. Got some chrome ones. This came with black ones so I'm going to put chrome ones on here now. All right, so setting the intonation. What you want to do is make sure your guitar is still tuned to pitch. And where did I put my guitar pick? Here it is. So make sure everything's still tuned. So we're at the low E right now, and I want to fret the low E at the 12th fret. And we are a little bit off using a flat blade screwdriver. I'll have to turn this forward just a little bit. Check to see if it's tuned still. Retune. A little sharp. There, fret 12 fret on the low E. Bingo. Now let's go to the next string, A. Tune that up, or down actually. And then fret it at the 12th fret. Right on the money. D string, 12th fret. back a little bit yeah, these flying V's are a little bit difficult to work with Tune. All right, twelve fret. Just a little bit more. This time I moved it forward. Retune. Right 
there. 12 fret. Strings are still stretching a little bit. Bad thing about this is, is you gotta be careful. You do not make your finger stretch the string from side to side. Just a little bit more. What I like about these roller bridges is you do not have to loosen the string up. I'm going the wrong way. I guess you can get a big laugh out of that now. <coughs> Alright, retune again. G, G, fretted, that's perfect, B, and tune it a little bit down. Right there, low E or high E, I mean, fine tune it. Twelve fret, right on it. Intonation is done. Pretty simple. All right, my last step is to adjust the pickup height. Now, you guys may not have to do this. In my case, because I replaced the pickups on the Jackson guitar, I'm going to have to. So the rule of thumb that I go by is what PB states that they set their pickup height at for humbuckers, um, both bridge and neck. They're both measured a little bit differently, but the same way. Now for a neck pickup, they say 364 on the high side and low side of the pickup, low E, high E, underneath those strings, fretting at the last fret of the fretboard, and then measuring from under the string to the top of the pole piece. On a humbucker for the bridge pickup, it's 132 done the same way. So that's the last step that I have. Now, I follow that rule just to get a roundabout measurement, and then I listen to see what it sounds like. If it sounds like it's too hot or, or, you know, it doesn't sound right to me. I kind of fine-tune it a little bit, but it's a roundabout adjustment. For EMG pickups, like uh, active pickups and stuff, they tell you to adjust the pickups as close as you can to the string without touching the string while fretting at the last fret. And then you kind of play it by ear from there as well. But it's kind of just a roundabout of what I do when I'm setting up the guitar, and it's been working pretty good for me. So thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and uh, you guys take care, have a good one.